welcome to episode 7 of Ask a Therapist. I'm Dr. Joseph Randolph Bowers with Ability Therapy Specialists. Today's episode is on the topic of gay, and lesbian, bisexual, transgender, intersex, and two-spirit couple counseling and marriage counseling. Uh, the first point of call when working with minority people around couple and family issues is to gauge where each person is at and where their belief system is and what their hang-ups might be what has influenced them in their family upbringing and where they're at currently in the relationship we all bring to our relationships what I might call scripts or stories. This narrative of our life and our relationships unconsciously, usually unconsciously, influences the choices we make and the issues that come up for us in the midst of a couple relationship. Even during the early days of a couple relationship when people are falling in love, these issues come up for people and they influence, guide and direct and sometimes harm their relationship that they're trying to form. They can be family belief systems, values inherited unconsciously from parents or society. They can be belief systems relating to histories in religion and culture. All of these contributing factors, including what we learn growing up and what we observe of adult relationships, influences our current relationship. This is pretty much the same for gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, intersexed, or two-spirit people, as well as for heterosexual uh, couples. Across the board, couple counseling, I think, has a lot of similarities. I guess the main difference is from my point of view is that minority couples deal with an added layer if not several added layers of social values and internalized beliefs including internalized homophobia that influences their relationship uh, and their sense or vision of what it means to be in an adult relationship, a couple relationship, or a marriage relationship, and how that plays out, and what it means to have a family. Uh, I remember in my early days of studying couple and family therapy that one of my colleagues at the time said, the best families are intentional families. And this was uh, enlightening for me because I always conceived of families as basically what's been given to us and uh, what we grow up with and who we just happen to meet is kind of given to us. But the idea of an intentional family, intentional relationships opened my mind to a new way of thinking at that time. It gave me a sense of empowerment personally but also a sense of how do adults actually choose to fall in love? How do we actually choose to form relationships of significance for ourselves? How do we actually choose within that process of falling in love and making a new relationship, making a family? Something that is meaningful for us, something that is powerful and important for us as individuals. I think that everyone has the capacity to make those kinds of choices and honestly I think that therapy if anything is is a process that helps people to dig deep look at their own value systems, their own beliefs, their own attitudes to examine that and bring it forward to share that in a loving way in an understanding, empathic way with their partner, to be heard and, you know, to hear, 
what's happening in each other's lives and, and to learn about each other in a, in a, in a very powerful, revealing uh, and meaningful way that's often extremely healing for people from minority situations. Because not only can we heal in our relationships, uh, our most intimate and important relationships in, you know, at the level of heart and soul and body, we can heal at these levels, but not only that, but we can heal from these layers. The layers that have been added on to our lives since childhood, and even in our genetic makeup and our family histories, our transgenerational issues that can also be brought forward and healed in many, many different ways through psychotherapy and counseling, through spiritual methods, through cultural methods of healing, um, and in relationship, in the context of relationship as a sacred environment, all couples can work on these kinds of issues and move forward. So, it actually feels ironic to me that at this stage in Australia, when we are looking at uh, gay marriage so directly, where the vote for gay marriage hasn't come through yet, we're still waiting for the results. It's ironic to me that uh, discussion about uh, gay and lesbian relationships, marriage, couple counseling, would actually be about human relationships and and all couples and all marriages because essentially we're all the same. Essentially we're all gifted in this capacity to love another person and for some people that capacity is to love someone of the same gender, the same sex. This is a gift, it's a, it's, it's a provision that human beings have and we're not the only species uh, to have this gift or this capacity. And that's how we define these different identities, gay, lesbian, bisexual, heterosexual, transgender, intersex, two-spirited. We define these identities as a capacity to love another person of whatever formation in such a way that it helps us to journey towards transformation, towards an ascension of our base human nature towards a higher level of empathy, of compassion, of loving kindness, of, of patience and endurance, of virtues that guide and direct our heart and our spirit towards a higher way of living, a more true and honest way of living with ourselves first, but also through that relationship as a catalyst our relationships are that environment in which we can transform and face our deepest issues, hang-ups, fears, anxieties, as well as our most profound gifts and our capacity to love, which is indeed often much more confronting than facing our darkness, is actually facing our incredible capacity for love and healing. Thank you for this question. It's been a, a brilliant discussion and for a good day.